Hi, my name is Dr. Kristen Roberts. I'm an associate professor at The Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. And my research also focuses on dietary pattern assessments and chronic pancreatitis um, and other gastrointestinal conditions as well. And micronutrient assessment has been part of our pancreatology clinic. And so I'm really excited to share information today about this topic. Um, our plan for this video is that we're gonna go over the roles of vitamins and minerals in our life. We're gonna um, talk about some of the tests to check for deficiency. We're gonna review treatment options available for when you happen to be diagnosed with a deficiency. And then we'll end with some resources to learn more. So when we're lacking or deficient in certain nutrients, we can start to see improper bodily functions, such as the weakening of our bones. We can start to see neurological changes, such as difficulty walking or confusion. And physically, we can start to see changes in our appearance, maybe the way that our hair, our skin, our nails um, are appearing. Our oral health may change and our vision may change as well. Additionally, many of these nutrients have roles in how we metabolize our nutrients, how we use carbohydrates, fats, and protein in our body. And sometimes when we are deficient in these nutrients, we may lack energy as these nutrients help us to get energy from food. So when people ask what tests are used to check for deficiencies, it's really a loaded question because there are specific tests that we use for each micronutrient. And some of these micronutrients have really great assays or lab tests that we can determine our body's status and other micronutrients we just don't have great testing for. So it really is specific to the patient the condition that they have and the symptoms that they're presenting with on when and what tests we might offer um, to be able to identify a deficiency. But in reality, it's more than just the lab test that we use to check for deficiencies. So your provider or your dietitian or your healthcare team should be evaluating your diet, what you're including and what you're excluding, any current supplement use and the types of supplements and the dose of those supplements. Also looking at the degree of malabsorption um, that you're uh, experiencing and this physical assessment, all of those things need to be pulled together with this lab value. And it's all of those items that can give us a diagnosis. There's not one test that can diagnose a vitamin or mineral deficiency accurately 100% of the time. And this is why, again, it's important to talk about um, any concerns that you have about vitamin and mineral deficiencies with your providers. In reoccurring acute pancreatitis and chronic pancreatitis, there are specific nutrients that we think are more commonly found to be deficient um, when patients are experiencing exocrine pancreatic insufficiency or EPI. Um, but we're still learning a lot about this. So the picture is not entirely clear. Many providers may start by looking at the fat soluble vitamins. So specifically vitamins A, D, E, and K. Um, and again, that goes along with the fact that we know um, fat malabsorption may be more common in this patient population. Um, and once we start to see deficiencies in the fat soluble vitamins, it may um, you know, encourage providers to start looking at other nutrients as well that might be also um, insufficient in the diet and in the body. So when asked about these tests and their reliability, um, there's many factors that can impact the reliability of the test. One of the biggest ones that we often talk about with many of our providers is understanding the impact of inflammation. When our body is inflamed, um, perhaps we're in the hospital and we're dealing with some type of active infection, some micronutrient lab values may become falsely elevated and some other micronutrient lab values may be falsely declined. And so it might look like there's a deficiency when there's truly not. So again, we have to look at the whole picture of the individual and treat a deficiency as a whole and not just as one particular laboratory assessment. So when patients ask um, how often they should get these labs done, it's a hard question to answer because we don't have consensus on this topic. 
most of the guidelines that are out there are fairly vague in their wording, and they may use words like periodic evaluation, and then they don't really give us a definition of what periodic means. I can share with you that in our practice, we screen for the fat-soluble vitamins, so A, D, E, and K, in addition to vitamin B12, zinc, and iron with a marker of inflammation on an annual basis. It's when we find abnormalities in any of those levels that we may start to add in other micronutrient assessments on top of that, that might correlate with the clinical picture that we're seeing in that clinic visit. When a patient has an, an inadequate laboratory value, um, we'll put in our intervention. So that might mean a dietary intervention that might mean a micronutrient supplementation. And we'll usually follow those labs every three months until the patient is stabilized or that cause of that deficiency has been corrected. If we see any abrupt change to a patient's nutritional status, we might assess these micronutrient levels earlier than an annual visit. So deciding the course of treatment depends on the following. It depends on the severity of the deficiency. So perhaps that lab value or any physical symptoms that you're experiencing, what the cause was of the deficiency and the risk of reoccurrence of that deficiency. So let me give you a few examples. If you have severe exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, despite appropriate dosing of PERT, your risk for recurrent micronutrient deficiency will likely persist. So if we replete that micronutrient deficiency first, you'll likely need maintenance dosing to keep your micronutrient status within the normal range. And again, very close monitoring in this individual is important in case the changes to the absorption of those supplements um, is impacted. Alternatively, let's say the PERT dosing is optimized um, and the patient is doing pretty well with their absorption and it's just partially because they're not eating enough of those nutrients or getting enough exposure of those nutrients in their diet, we may just need to focus on supplementation in that case. Um, if there's weight loss and micronutrient deficiencies, we're going to probably need to do both, manage the diet and the supplements at the same time. So again, um, just kind of wrapping up this section, I just want to make sure that when it comes to micronutrient treatment, the dose, the formulation, that you are talking with your physician or registered dietitian nutritionist to consider the suitable diet um, and dosing requirements that are specific to your needs. So what works for one patient with chronic pancreatitis might not work for another. In our other video, you can learn more about vitamins and minerals, who is at risk, and known symptoms of deficiencies. In Mission Cures related videos, you can learn how to manage your nutrition needs, understand exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, and PERT dosing for proper nutrient absorption. Thank you very much for having me today. I was excited to share this information on micronutrient management with everybody.